Welcome to this lecture. Starting from this lecture, we are going to study a qualitative analysis of wave equation. So far, we have done the quantitative, quantitative analysis for the wave equation, uh, namely we have solved Cauchy problems, initial boundary value problems associated to the wave equation. So, in today's lecture we are going to discuss a special property of solutions to wave equation in one dimensions. It is known as parallelogram identity. The outline for today's lecture is first we show that solutions to homogeneous wave equation satisfy a parallelogram identity. Then we show that C2 function satisfying parallelogram identity is indeed a solution to the homogeneous wave equation and we apply parallelogram identity and solve a few problems. So, solutions to homogeneous wave equation satisfy parallelogram identity. Definition of a characteristic parallelogram. A parallelogram in the xt plane is said to be a characteristic parallelogram if each of its sides lies along a characteristic line. Recall that there are two families of characteristic lines for wave equation. They are x minus c t equal to constant and x plus c t equal to constant. These are the two families. So, let parallelogram p q r s be a parallelogram in the x t plane with sides p q, q r, r s and s p. Then parallelogram p q r s is a characteristic parallelogram if each one of the sides p q q r r s s p lies along some member of one of the two families of characteristic lines. The picture is here p q r s okay, the side p q lies on this line x minus c t equal to constant q r lies on x plus c t equal to constant r s lies on x minus c t equal to a constant and S p lies on x plus c t equal to constant. So, this is a characteristic parallelogram because each of its sides lies on some characteristic line. So, we have this theorem. Suppose P q r s is a characteristic parallelogram with the line segments P r, P r and q s as its diagonals. This is just to fix uh, this kind of a picture P r and q s are diagonals. So, in principle q can be here and s can be here, but we are going to say that uh, without loss of generality let us assume uh, p q r s are described in this anti clockwise manner the vertices of the parallelogram. After all this is only a description naming. Okay. Let u be a function having this form u of x t is equal to f of x minus c t plus g of x plus c t for some functions f g defined on r. So, no assumptions on f and g. Okay. What all we need is f and g are just functions defined on R, then this automatically defines a function on R2 u of x t for x t belongs to R2. Conclusion is the values of u at the vertices p q r s of the parallelogram that is a characteristic parallelogram, they satisfy the parallelogram identity u of p plus u of r equal to u of q plus u of s. So, this is how the parallel characteristic parallelogram looks like. So, u of p plus u of r is equal to u of q plus u of s. So, without loss of generality assume that the side p q lies along we have to set up some notations. So, p q lies along this characteristic line x minus c t equal to k 1 and the vertices are uh, as in this picture namely they are described in this anti clockwise manner just to set up notations and therefore q r lies on some member of the characteristic uh, lines family 
and of course it has to be from the other family x plus ct equal to lambda L, L2 there is some number L2 there is some number k2 such that rs is along this line x minus ct equal to k2 there is a number L1 such that sp lies along x plus ct equal to L1 that is what precisely we are assuming. So, without loss of generality the characteristic parallelogram may be described as follows the side pq lies along the characteristic line x minus ct equal to k1 for some k1 the vertices are described in the anti clockwise manner pqrs is a character is a characteristic parallelogram therefore there are characteristic lines along which the sides of pqrs lie in other words there are numbers l1 l2 k2 such that the sides sp qr and rs lie along the characteristic lines which are described here we already saw this in the picture since u has this form that u of xt equal to f of x minus ct plus g of x plus ct we get u of p equal to f of k1 plus g of l1 because p lies on x minus ct equal to k1 and x plus ct equal to l1 similarly u of q equal to fk1 plus gl2 u of r is f of k2 plus g of l2 and u of s equal to f of k2 plus g of l1 from the above set of equalities the parallelogram identity follows you can easily check that u of p plus u of r is equal to u of q plus u of s so as a remark on the theorem recall that the general solution to the homogeneous wave equation utt minus e square uxx equal to 0 is given by uxt equal to f of x minus ct plus g of x plus ct where f and g are c2 functions defined in r. Therefore, any c2 solution of the homogeneous wave equation satisfies parallelogram identity for every characteristic parallelogram. Recall parallelogram identity is stated only for characteristic parallelograms. So, the next result asserts the equivalence of being a solution to the wave equation homogeneous wave equation and satisfying the parallelogram identity for every characteristic parallelogram. In other words C2 function satisfying parallelogram identity is a solution to the homogeneous wave equation. So, let u from r2 to r be a twice continuously differentiable function for every characteristic parallelogram PQRS with the line segments PR and QS as its diagonals the parallelogram identity holds. Conclusion U solves the homogeneous wave equation which is UTT minus C square UXX equal to 0. So, proof of the theorem we are given that parallelogram identity holds for every characteristic parallelogram. Main idea is to cleverly construct useful characteristic parallelograms. This is a standard idea in mathematics whenever you are given wealth of information like here something holds for every characteristic parallelogram if you want to use it you have to really exploit it by cleverly making choices. So, it is easy to verify that these points PQRS are vertices of a characteristic parallelogram. In fact, we have derived these points how they should look like and then wrote down here. So, it is easier if you look at the picture. So, let us take the point P as xi tau and this line is given by x minus ct equal to constant since this point lies on it that constant has to be xi minus c tau. So, like this. Now, I am going to consider q which is of the type xi plus s comma something. I can determine what that point is using this equation that is why I get q. Similarly, I propose s yes, is like xi minus r comma something and that something can be determined by using this equation x plus ct equal xi plus c tau I get s. Yes. Once I know s yes, I can write down the equation of this characteristic line passing through this point which is this equation. Similarly, from q I can write down the characteristic uh, line passing through q the other one. One I already know. So, this is from the other uh, family 
and I see where they intersect I get this point. That is how the vertices were determined. So, why is it a clever choice? We will see it uh, on the next slides in the proof. So, this is the picture that we have for PQRS and uh, they, lie, they are actually vertices of a characteristic parallelogram. So, we are now in a shape to apply the parallelogram identity u of p plus u of r equal to u of q plus u of s. So, it can also be written as or rewritten as this u q minus u p equal to u r minus u s. Now, notice what is u of q minus u of p? It is a value of uh, u at this point. What is this point? It is actually xi comma tau plus s into 1 comma 1 by c and when s equal to 0 I am at p. So, this is a, some kind of difference of u values of u along this direction 1 comma 1 by c. Similarly, this u of r minus u of s you see s and s by c. So, the point r is nothing but this point s plus s times 1 comma 1 by c. So, that is also a variation or difference in this direction 1 comma 1 by c. So, if you different if you divide this differences with s divided by small s which is this s and then take the limit as s goes to 0 what we get is a directional derivative of u in this direction 1 comma 1 by c at the point p. Similarly, if you look at u r minus u s divided by small s this s okay, then we get the directional derivative of u at this point s in the direction 1 comma 1 by c. So, just substituting for p q r s we get this. Now, you look at this, this is a difference quotient, difference quotient when you are trying to compute the directional derivative of u in the direction 1 comma 1 by c at the point xi tau. Similarly, this also when you are trying to compute the directional derivative of u at this point xi minus r comma tau plus r by c which is uh, the point denoted by capital S in the parallelogram in the direction 1 comma 1 by c. So, passing to the limit yields the directional derivatives. Why the limit exists? Because we are given that the function is C2. Therefore, all partial derivatives of order 1 exists. So, we can compute using any formula that you like. So, we get this. So, if you expand what is this? Grad u is ux comma ut, ux comma ut is the gradient dot 1 comma 1 by c that will give you ux plus ut by c. So, we get this at the point xi tau similarly the rhs. So, derivative in the direction directional derivative in the direction of 1 comma 1 by c is nothing but this particular combination of the partial derivatives. So, rewriting what we have here we get this. Now, if you look at this is the point P, this is the point S, this is also like a difference quotient once you divide with R, but in which direction? This suggests xi tau, this is xi tau plus minus R comma R by C. Okay? R is positive, therefore plus R comma minus 1 comma 1 by C as far as the direction goes it is 1 comma minus 1 by c. So, passing to this limit as r goes to 0 we get the par, the directional derivative in the direction 1 comma minus 1 by c which is here the first one here. This is the directional derivative in the direction 1 comma 1 by c minus 1 by c of this quantity which is there here for which we have the difference quotients here when you divide with uh, r. So, once you expand 
you get dou 2 u by dou x square minus 1 by c square dou 2 u by dou t square at xi t equal to 0. Xi t is an r, xi tau is an arbitrary point therefore u satisfies the wave equation at every point. Of course, here we have used that when you expand you will get dou 2 u by dou x dou t and dou 2 u by dou t dou x they get cancelled because you use a C2 function. Mixed partial derivatives are equal. So, the two theorems establish the following equivalence for a function which is C2 of r cross r in fact the same proof works with C2 of r cross 0 infinity. The following statements are equivalent. U solves the wave equation is same as saying that on every characteristic parallelogram U satisfies the parallelogram identity. The second statement is meaningful even for a continuous function. In fact, you do not even need continuity, but I am just putting because it is something nice to have. Of course, we can even take discontinuous functions that is another thing. Okay. What I am saying is that this second part namely parallelogram identity makes sense. This statement makes sense without any requirement of differentiability on u. This observation provides us a way to generalize the notion of solution whenever required we are going to discuss them later on. So, let us look at some applications of parallelogram identity which is in solution of an IBVP with the Dirichlet boundary conditions. So, using parallelogram identity solve the Darbu problem. What is Darbu problem? Utt minus uxx equal to 0 that is a wave equation posed in which domain t bigger than maximum of x comma minus x. That is nothing but this t is greater than mod x maximum of x comma minus x is precisely mod x. In this domain we have to solve wave equation and we are given Cauchy conditions u is given to be so u is given to be phi here and u is given to be psi here and this is the domain in which we have to solve. And we are given phi and psi to be C2 functions satisfying uh, phi of 0 equal to psi of 0. So, let us uh, solve this problem. So, what are the steps involved? First step is finding a suitable characteristic parallelogram. Suitable means useful. Second is use parallelogram identity. and obtain a solution. Of course, third thing still remains that we have to check that the solution that we have obtained in 2 is indeed a classical solution. Okay, let us look at the step 1 here first. Step 1 is to find a suitable characteristic parallelogram. These are the lines x equal to t and x equal to minus t. Both of them are characteristic uh, lines. So, let me pick up a point p here. I name it as xi tau and not uh, x and t because I would like to use this notation of x and t in describing the lines. So, this line is x minus t equal to xi minus tau and this line is x plus t equal to xi plus tau. 
So, we call that as P let us call this as Q uh, R is the origin and this is the S. And here we are given u equal to phi and here we are given u equal to psi. Therefore, uh, u at p can be obtained very easily. What we need to know is what is q, what is s. So, let us find out what is q and s. So, p q the line p q the side p q lies on x minus t equal to xi minus tau. Therefore, q coordinates are given by xi minus tau by 2 comma tau minus xi by 2. P s lies on x plus t equal to xi plus tau. But S also lies on x equal to t. So, x component t component must be same. Therefore, S is xi plus tau by 2 comma xi plus tau by 2. So, we know the coordinates for q and s r of course is 0 0. Therefore, u of uh, yeah we have to find what is u of q. So, u of q so, u of q is here, it is given in terms of psi. So, psi of tau minus xi by 2 and u of s is given in terms of phi, that is phi of xi plus tau by 2. And what is u of r? u of r is u of 0, 0 and that is equal to phi of 0. Of course, we have assumed that is equal to psi of 0 by assumption. You may call compatibility condition. So, step 2 is to get a solution right. Step 2 apply parallelogram identity. We already computed uh, u of r, u of q, u of s. So, therefore, u of xi tau is equal to psi of tau minus xi by 2 plus phi of xi plus tau by 2 minus phi 0. So, in terms of x t, I simply replace xi tau with x t. So, u x t is equal to psi of t minus x by 2 plus phi of x plus t by 2 minus phi 0. So, we have obtained the solution. Now, what remains is step 3. I have to check that the u given by this box, the formula is actually a classical solution to the given problem. And that follows from our assumptions on phi and psi. We assumed this. In fact, we only need the following. In fact, we only need that what do we need? Phi and psi should be C2 functions because I should be able to differentiate the expression for u 2 times and I need continuity only up to 0. Of course, one can check this problem is also well posed. So, let us look at problem 2. Here we are supposed to solve a homogeneous wave equation with uh, initial conditions and an possibly a non-zero boundary condition general function h of t. We will use parallelogram identity 
to solve in some region of this domain. The domain in which we are interested in solving is this x positive t positive. From our prior experience we do know that in this domain which is determined by the line x equal to t namely x bigger than t the d'Alembert formula holds for the solution. So essentially we need to solve at a point which is above this line let us say a point here using parallelogram identity. So therefore let us look at how to solve that in this region uh, where x is less than t this region. So let us this is the line x equal to t these are the axis. Let us take a point P let us denote by xi tau because we are going to use uh, x and t to describe the equations of the characteristic lines. So what we do is uh, just take this line which is parallel to this characteristic and this is the other one and this is the other one. So Q R yes. So we know parallelogram identity gives us that u of p is equal to u of q plus u of s minus u of r. Okay. What is u of q? It is determined in terms of h because u is equal to h. What is u, uh, what is u of s? u of s is, is given in terms of phi because u is equal to phi here and u of r also. So it looks like it does not depend on psi. So it means we are erring somewhere. Then when we look back PQRS is only a trapezium, it is not a parallelogram, forget about being a characteristic parallelogram. So this is a wrong picture, tempting but wrong picture. So what is the correct picture? This is the line x equal to t, start at a point P which is xi comma tau. So this has to be a characteristic, this is the other characteristic, this is the other characteristic. Now it looks okay, Q, this point is R, this point is S. We have to determine what these points are. We know U at Q because U is prescribed here as H, but we do not know what is U of R and U of S. That needs to be determined once again uh, using uh, the D'Alembert formula because for which D'Alembert formula holds. So if you call this as origin. O, the, let us call this R dash, U of R is given in terms of uh, 0, O and R dash. Similarly, this also. So in which case we have to find out what are these points R dash and S dash to get solution at these points. So it is a two step process. So at this, in this picture what we have is uh, PQRS is a parallel characteristic parallelogram. Therefore, u of p is equal to u of q plus u of s minus u of r by parallelogram identity. So now what we have to do is compute u of r, u of s and substitute in this formula. Q R yes R dash yes dash okay so P Q the side P Q lies on x minus t equal to xi minus tau line therefore. Q is where x is uh, 0 therefore 0 when x is 0 t is tau minus psi. Now let us look at P s. 
that lies on x plus t equal to xi plus tau. Therefore, the point S is xi plus tau by 2, xi plus tau by 2 because the point which lies on the line x equal to t. So, x and t coordinates are same. Let us look at QR. It lies on x plus t is equal to tau minus xi okay, because it passes through the point Q. Therefore, the point R is given by tau minus xi by 2 comma tau minus xi by 2 because R is also a point which is lying on the line x equal to t. Therefore, we can write down what are the what are the values. Let us write one by one what is u of r? u of r is given by phi of 0 plus phi of tau minus xi by 2. I am using the delimit formula for us psi is 0. So, the coordinates of r dash are tau minus xi comma 0. Similarly, u of s is equal to because s dash is xi plus tau comma 0. The value is phi of 0 plus phi of xi plus tau by 2. So, we got r and s. So, therefore, u at the point xi comma tau is u of p. Okay. By parallelogram identity, it is u of q plus u of s minus u of r. So, that is nothing but h of tau minus xi plus phi of xi plus tau minus phi of tau minus xi by 2. So, now let us switch to x t instead of xi tau because now we have the formula. So, u of x t is nothing but h of t minus x plus phi of x plus t minus phi of t minus x by 2. Therefore, let us write down the full solution. Full solution means we write down what is the solution in x less than t, x greater than t in one, one place is u of x t equal to phi of x minus t plus phi of x plus t by 2 if x is greater than or equal to t h of t minus x plus phi of x plus t minus phi of t minus x by 2 if x t is bigger than x. So, this is region 1, this is region 2. So, this is for the region 1 and this is for the region 2. In region 1, it is given by D'Alembert form. Now, let us make some observations. First point is that u is smooth everywhere as smooth as the given function phi and h are in each of these regions 1 and 2. everywhere in the first quadrant except possibly on this line x equal to t. So, let us examine what happens on the line x equal to t. So, first part is continuity, is it continuous at points of x equal to t? So, from region 1 what we get is phi 0 plus phi of 2 x by 2 and from region 2 what we get is h 0 plus phi of 2 x minus phi of 0 by 2. So, this is a same as phi of 0 equal to h of 0. So, this is one compatibility condition that we get. 
the continuity of this function demands that phi 0 must be equal to h 0. Similarly, let us check for C 1 s. For that we need to write what is u x of x t of course, u t of x t as well. So, u, of, uh, u x of x t is phi prime of x minus t plus phi prime of x plus t by 2 in the region x bigger than t h prime of minus h prime of t minus x plus phi prime of x plus t plus phi prime of t minus x by 2 in the region t bigger than x. So, this is the region 1, this is the region 2. So, therefore, u x is continuous if and only if the limits from uh, both the regions 1 and 2 as we approach x equal to t coincide. So, what we have is phi prime of 0 plus phi prime of 2 x by 2 should be equal to minus h prime of 0 plus phi prime of 2 x plus phi prime of 0 by 2. And this happens if and only if h prime of 0 equal to 0. So, similarly u t is continuous. if and only if h prime of 0 is 0. So, the same compatibility condition. Therefore, u is c 1 if and only if h prime of 0 is 0 phi of 0 equal to h of 0. Let us look at c 2 ness for which we need the formula for u x x in both the regions. So, therefore, u x x is continuous at points of the line x equal to t if and only if phi double dash of 0 plus phi double dash of 2 x by 2 is equal to h double dash of 0 plus phi phi double dash of 2 x minus phi double dash of 0 by 2 and that is if and only if phi double dash of 0 equal to h double dash of 0. Similarly, uh, u t t is continuous on x equal to t under the same conditions no new compatibility conditions are required. And you can easily check that you take u x and differentiate with respect to t. Similarly, take u t and differentiate with respect to x. They are also continuous on x equal to t under the same conditions. In fact, note that it is enough to check for one of them because in each of the regions 1 and 2, what are the regions set of all x t such that x is less than t and set of all x t such that x is bigger than t. In each of them u of x t that we have defined is a C2 function. So, therefore, u x t is same as u t x in each of the regions. Therefore, the u that we have, we have obtained is a classical solution if and only if the following compatibility conditions are satisfied.
these three compatibility conditions are satisfied. This is because we do not have a psi in the problem or psi is 0. If psi was there we would have got more uh, such conditions and it, it this will be different actually h prime of 0 will be in terms of psi. We have not checked the existence of ux, ut, uxx, uxt, utt at points on the line x equal to t. It is left as an exercise to you to check this using the definitions. Assuming these compatibility conditions which are written down on the top of this page namely phi of 0 equal to h of 0, h prime of 0 equal to 0, phi double dash of 0 equal to h double dash of 0. Yeah, let us look at the problem 3 now. Uh, we are asked to find u of 1, 2. We have a non homogeneous wave equation and uh, the usual Cauchy data and Dirichlet boundary condition which is 0. This problem can be solved using many techniques. One of them is uh, you make this 0 that is solve homogeneous problem with the same these conditions and then non homogeneous term is handled using Duhamel principle. That is one, one that we have already explored. Another idea is to extend this problem to whole of R. Here x is positive, it is posed only for x positive. Extend this problem to x in R, that means extend this function, these functions, so that you have a problem, Cauchy problem for R, uh, and then you use the D'Alembert formula and you get a solution. And there is a third approach. Sometimes we are lucky that we can spot some special solutions which uh, satisfy this equation, the non homogeneous part. If you notice this problem we have already considered in lecture 4.10. Here we solve it again but we use parallelogram identity. Okay. So take a special solution usually we get this by inspection particularly if the right hands are right hand sides are simple functions then it is easier to guess not always possible to guess but it is a trick after all. So take a special solution to the non homogeneous wave equation. We are not talking about any other conditions only equation and that phi of x t is equal to 1 by 6 x square t cube plus t power 5 by 10. There could be other functions also. But you have to figure out at least one function then we are on the road to solve this problem. So now consider w is equal to u minus v then w satisfies w t t minus w x x equal to 0 because both u and v solve non homogeneous problem therefore the difference solves homogeneous equation. What is w of x0? w of x0 is ux0 minus vx0. Luckily vx0 is 0 when you put t equal to 0 v of x0 is 0. So it is ux0 which we want it to be sin x. Similarly wt of x0 is 0. But now the problem is the boundary condition that turns out to be a non-zero function. But we do not bother because we have parallelogram identity with us which will give us solution to problems like this even if the data here is h and h non-zero. Solution of the problem for w. Remember we want to solve w of 1, 2 we want to find. So let us draw this line and 1, 2 actually comes in this region. If this is 1 unit, 2 unit will be much higher somewhere here. So this is the point P we have 1 comma 2. Now let us draw the characteristic parallelogram. Of course you could stop as before here or you could also go down and take this line and see where it hits. So this is Q, this is R, this is S. Okay. P Q lies on x minus t is equal to minus 1. Therefore, Q is 0, 1. Q R 
lies on x plus t is equal to 1. Therefore, r is 1 comma 0. P s lies on x plus t is equal to 3, r s lies on x minus t is equal to 1. Therefore, s is 2 comma 1. Therefore, w of p is equal to w of q plus w of s minus w of r by parallelogram identity and we get w of 1 comma 2 is equal to w of 0 1 plus w of 2 1 minus w of 1 0 and that is nothing but minus 1 by 60 that is the first term other things are sin 3 minus sin 1 by 2. Therefore, u of 1 comma 2 is equal to w of 1 comma 2 plus v of 1 comma 2 by the definition of w because w was u minus v and that is equal to minus 1 by 60 plus sin 3 minus sin 1 by 2 plus 1 by 6 into 8 plus 32 by 10. This upon simplification becomes sin 3 minus sin 1 by 2 plus 1 1 1 by 6 0. This is exactly the same solution that we obtained earlier. We will summarize for a C2 function u the following equivalence was established that is u solves a homogeneous wave equation in one dimension if and only if it satisfies parallelogram identity on every characteristic parallelogram. Then we have demonstrated how the parallelogram identity is useful in solving initial boundary value problems. Thank you.